Welcome. If you're new to Home Assistant, chances are you've spent at least some amount of time reading the forums or various Facebook groups looking for information about how to set up Home Assistant and integrate devices into it. You may also find yourself wondering about a lot of the terminology and phraseology that are being used in those places. YAML, Zigbee, Z-Wave, Hub, Repeater, Cloud Polling, Push, Local Push, Local Pull, Local Control, all sorts of stuff. In this episode of 5 Minute Friday, I'd like to spend 5 minutes discussing that last one, Local Control. Hi, I'm Jeff with Fast How To. Well, for now anyway. I'm looking for a better name for the channel since this one doesn't really show up so well in YouTube search results. If you've got a good idea for me, drop it in the comments and let me know. And if I pick your idea, I'll send you some cool smart home gear. But only if you're in the US, I'm, I'm sorry, but export restrictions and shipping costs and power requirements, yada, yada, yada. Since this is 5 Minute Friday, for those of you that are new here, first off, we talk about the rye. This rye that I have is Orphan Barrel Scarlet Shade. For those of you that are not familiar with Orphan Barrel, what Orphan Barrel does is they search the country looking for barrels that have been orphaned, forgotten about, tucked away in the back of a warehouse somewhere, and some distiller only has two, three, four, eight, whatever barrels of some type of whiskey. Not enough for them to bother bottling it. It's from an old run that they did some time ago. They forgot to pull all of them out of there. They missed one or a distillery closed down. They left a couple barrels behind. Uh, Orphan Barrel buys those barrels and then bottles them and makes a run. And once they're gone, they're gone. Orphan Barrel does not distill anything on their own. Uh, it's bottled in Tullahoma, Tennessee, and this one here, Scarlet Shade, this is a 14-year aged rye. 14-year aged ryes are pretty difficult to come by. This is actually my second bottle of this. The first bottle I did run across locally, and it was uh, $249, I believe. Uh, once I finished that one, though, it was so good. One of my favorite bottles of rye of all time, honestly. Uh, once I finished that one, uh, I went on the search for replacement and I managed to find this on the internet and I think it was uh, like 329 maybe something like that. Uh, if you have the means, totally worth it. Make sure to check it out. Uh, this is right up there with Kentucky Owl Last Batch. I'll cover that in a different video, but if you've ever had that, yeah, th this one's right up there. Trust me. Okay, so... Now that we've got the rye out of the way for five minute Friday, let's talk about the topic that we're here for. Local control. Lots of people talk about it, but when the rubber meets the road, it seems like very few people actually give a shit about it. I, for one, care a lot about it. Why? Well, allow me to illustrate the biggest reason why I think it's so important. Insteon, in April of 2022, after being in business for almost two days, Decades, Insteon shut down their cloud services and closed their doors. When cloud services ceased to function, users could no longer control their equipment. Yeah, yeah, the company was eventually acquired and even came back online and by all accounts looks to be doing pretty well, but not before an extended outage that was very inconvenient for customers of the original company and caused many of them to jump ship to solutions such as Home Assistant. Next on our shit list is Arlo security cameras. Free seven day cloud storage was taken away and was later given back after some pretty serious user backlash. The one that all of you should know about is LiftMaster or Chamberlain. They made MyQ incredibly difficult and kind of impossible to use with third party access methods. Right? I already made a video about this. They published an article on their website. Yeah, yeah, we're taking this away, blah, blah, blah. And now it's RAT GDO. I had a different way of 
using that, so I wasn't that affected, but I know a lot of you were, and a lot of you got really mad about it, so I'm sure unless you just installed Home Assistant yesterday, you probably already know about that one. Next up, the Ring Hacking Debacle. If you haven't heard about this one, in 2020, a class action lawsuit was actually filed against Ring when their system was hacked and people were using the mic and the speaker to spy on and taunt Ring camera owners. Next, Ring again. In May of 2023, a civil complaint filed in U.S. District Court in the District of Columbia on behalf of the Federal Trade Commission stated, before July 2017, Ring did not impose any technical or procedural restrictions on employees' ability to download, save, or transfer customers' videos. Who'd have thought that was a big deal? To their credit, Amazon, who later purchased Ring, has stated that it promptly addressed the issues at hand. Amazon has never been the target of any of these lawsuits, so I believe they probably did take care of it. I mean, if you ask Paul Hibbert, Bezos needs another yacht, right? And having to pay the government because of lawsuits doesn't allow you to afford a yacht, so. Next on our shit list is WISE. They removed free person detection via a firmware update. It's still available, but now you have to pay for it. Lowe's. They killed off their Iris smart home lineup in 2019, bricking all the devices. This is not an exhaustive list. On the contrary, you can troll the internet and find dozens, if not hundreds more examples of smart products that used to work or used to be free that are now either broken or are subscription-based. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy any of this stuff. Well, except for the companies that are already tits up, of course. Don't buy any of that. But cloud devices typically are exceptionally easy to configure and generally speaking are pretty cost effective. The devices themselves aren't terribly expensive since they kind of operate on the cell phone model, right? Give you the hardware, charge you for the subscriptions, and the subscriptions are just a few bucks a month. Obviously though, if you have just a few bucks a month for two dozen different devices, that could easily cost you 75 or maybe even 100 bucks a month just for all that different nonsense, right? Why would you want to do that? Local control, home assistant, that's the answer. But this combination of low cost and ease of use makes them perfect for non-technical users who want to add a little bit of smarts to their home. So what I'm here to do in this video is explain the differences between cloud control and local control and to help educate you about why I prefer local control for my devices. So what is local control anyway? It means that you can directly communicate with and control a device without having any traffic leave your network. In simpler terms, it means that you can unplug your internet connection and all your devices are still able to be controlled and continue working. Now, for the earlier examples of problem companies or products, in some cases, a method of local control was in fact available, such as the LiftMaster or Chamberlain garage door openers. Early on, you could use this HomeKit bridge, which it seems the entire internet was unaware of, except for me, and later after their big debacle, you could use RatGDO. So what's a guy to do? How can you determine if something is local control versus cloud control? Well, for starters, take everything you read on the forums and Reddit with a grain of salt. Problem is, you have no idea the experience level of the author, so you have no way of ensuring the accuracy of any of the information. Sure, yeah, there are definitely some exceptionally brilliant people posting on both the forums and on Reddit and Facebook and everywhere else. But when you're first beginning your home assistant journey, or any journey for that matter, 
it can be extremely difficult to identify those experienced individuals without the benefit of having any experience yourself, since everyone seems to be more experienced than you. Videos on YouTube should also be considered suspect, mine included. Why am I saying for you to take my videos with a grain of salt? Isn't that counterproductive to me even making videos? So now you're sitting there wondering, well, but what if the video actually shows what they're talking about? Isn't demonstrating it live on camera enough? Eh, the answer, unfortunately, is yes and no. See, here's the thing. Home Assistant and smart home products in general change very rapidly. So if you're watching a video within the first few weeks or maybe the first few months after I made it, that detailed technical information in there, probably still valid. If, however, you find this video in the summer of 2025, the concepts that I'm discussing will always be valid, but the actual technical details or the location of some of this information may or may not still be correct. Need an example? Go check out the video I made on how to install Home Assistant onto a Nook using Ubuntu and Belina Etcher. The technical bits on that video went out of date faster than anything I've ever seen before. Literally, that video was garbage two weeks after I made it, something like that. Belina Etcher got into a big fight with their cloud hosting provider and it was a mess. If you need another example, go check out some of my real early videos, such as the seven must do things after initial setup. Take a look at where things are in the interface in that video. Home Assistant looks totally different today, and that video is barely two years old. Anyhow, a great way to figure out if something is local control or not is by taking a look at the Home Assistant documentation for that integration. The documentation will tell you the IoT class. At the time this video was made, this information can be found in the upper right-hand corner of the documentation page. It'll say something like IoT class is local push or IoT class is cloud polling. I'll leave a link in the description to the main integrations page where you can search for the product that you're interested in. If an integration that you've already configured requires a cloud connection, there'll be a little cloud icon on the integration when you look on your integrations page in the Home Assistant. Now, what if you're in a hurry? You're out shopping somewhere and you see a cool product but don't have time to look it up right there. Generally speaking, a good rule of thumb is that Z-Wave, Zigbee, HomeKit, Bluetooth, and Thread or Matter devices are local control. If it's Wi-Fi, total crapshoot. What if there's a product out there that you're unsure about? Order one from somewhere that has a good return policy, like Walmart or Target or Amazon. Test it out. If you don't like it, return it. Finally, the best way to determine if a device you're using relies on the cloud is to simply unplug the cloud. Unplug your internet connection and see if all your smart home shit still works. Anything that doesn't continue to work is relying on the cloud in some way, shape, or form. So what's a guy to do for all these devices and services? Doorbells, lights, security cameras, video recording, person, object identification, lighting, home security, voice control, blinds, <laughs> does the list ever end? Well, like I mentioned, for almost all of these services, a locally controlled option does exist. The vast majority of locally controlled devices cost more than their cloud-based counterparts, and that's because the cloud-only solutions take the same approach as cell phone companies. Typically, they sell you the hardware at a discount, if not a loss, because in most cases, they make their money on the subscription that everyone pays to use the cloud service. Show me a cloud service that doesn't require a paid subscription, and I'll show you a company that's either selling your personal data that they're collecting from the cloud service, or that'll be out of business in a handful of years. Now, there are some additional considerations to take into account if you're gonna aim for local control of everything, such as feature set. Amazon Key in garage delivery, for example, only works with cloud connected garage door openers. Well, duh, the driver has to be able to 
press a button in their app to open your garage door. Unless you're going to give your UPS guy access to your entire smart home, cloud control is sort of needed for that one. Voice control, though, that's another one. Amazon's she who shan't be named is actually pretty fantastic at figuring out what you said and taking actions based on that. No, no, I don't have any, but I've got several friends that do, and it's really fun to screw with them. Home Assistant does have local voice control now, but I still haven't played with it yet, so I'm not going to comment on it since the only information I have is what I've read in the forums. That's not to say that the open source product doesn't work. As I've said, I haven't tried it just yet. It's just that the commercial product with a several year head start and, I mean, Bezos got money behind it, probably works a little better. Regardless of that fact, the commercial product sure is nicer looking from what I've seen of solutions that people have put together so far for use with Home Assistant voice control. There are some areas, though, where local control is actually better than what's available in the cloud. Take, for example, security cameras. The Ring Stickup Cam plugin is $99.99 on ring.com. It records in 1080p, and for $3.99 a month, you can save up to 180 days of video in the Ring cloud. Or you can get an Amcrest IP camera on Amazon for $94.99, which is five bucks less, that records 4K video and store your footage locally for as long as you want. But where do I store it? And how much does that cost? Great question. I'm glad you asked. There are many different choices for NVRs or network video recorders. Since I prefer not to be locked into a single camera manufacturer, I use Blue Iris for my NVR, which works with any Envy for RTSP IP's video camera. For object and person detection, I use DeepStack, which runs on my Blue Iris server. The Blue Iris software is like 70 or 80 bucks and DeepStack is free. You'll need a computer to run that stuff on and a hard drive to store the footage on, of course, but that stuff is outside the scope of discussion for this particular video. If you'd like more information about that though, I did make a three-part series all about Blue Iris and DeepStack already, where I go over the hardware that I'm running it on, how to install it, how to configure it, how to add a camera, how to integrate it with Home Assistant, all sorts of stuff. Automations, the works. I'll throw a link to part one down in the description. There are other hardware agnostic solutions as well, such as Frigate. And if you don't mind being married to a single vendor for your NVR and your cameras, there are solutions from companies such as Real Link, Ubiquity, and several others that will store your footage locally. For doorbells, again, there's all kinds of different solutions. I can't speak to very many except for Ubiquity and Amcrest, since those are what I currently use, but I see a lot of different products advertised that are local control, and the video from most, if not all of them, including Ubiquity, can be offloaded to Blue Iris. This video has already gotten long enough. If you'd like to see what other local control products that I use in my smart home, check out my other videos where I cover lots of that equipment. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell to be notified when I post future videos about my setup and how to configure more smart home equipment with Home Assistant. If you'd like to help support the channel, I invite you to join my Patreon group. Patrons have access to all sorts of benefits ranging from access to downloadable code from videos, the periodic copies of my dashboard, automations, and configuration YAML files, early access to ad-free videos, Discord access, free t-shirts, exclusive giveaways, and more. Benefits start at just three US dollars per month. There's a link in the description if you'd like to join. And to all my current patrons, thank you guys for your support. You're amazing. I really do hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope that I was able to help you understand why local control is something that everyone should strive for. I hope that you liked today's t-shirt, and I look forward to seeing all of your smiling faces in the next video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, 
Go automate something, will you?